Welcome to the Folkestone Marine Reserve. The reserve covers a wide range of marine habitats, including well-developed fringing reefs, several patch reefs, and offshore bank reefs, all with a phenomenal diversity of flora and fauna. This sanctuary for marine life is protected against fishing, removal of marine life, and harmful coastal development. Unfortunately, reserves alone cannot protect this magnificent underwater world from threats that our oceans encounter every day. Help is required from local communities and those whose livelihoods depend on reefs to protect them and spread the word of the importance of protecting marine biodiversity. Through the Reef Watchers program, local divers are given the opportunity to move beyond awareness and play an active role in research and conservation at the Folkestone Marine Reserve. Hi, thank you for volunteering in the Reef Watcher program. My name is Renata Goodridge. I'm the Senior Marine Technician at CERMES. I'm also the Team Scientist for the Reef Watcher program. We've prepared this instructional video for you so that it will assist you in running your Reef Watcher's coral reef monitoring machine. If you haven't already read the Reef Watchers Instruction Manual, we advise you that perhaps you would like to look at it at this time. It will give you a more detailed description of what we're going to go over in this video. There are six basic steps to Reef Watchers Coral Reef Monitoring Regime. One, preparing equipment. Two, site selection and site description. Three, the fish survey. Four, invertebrate survey. Five, the substrate survey and six, the wrap-up and data slate and sheet collection. Before monitoring, you will need to prepare all of your gear that you'll need to actually monitor on the coral reef. You will need a transect line, and here we actually use a minimum of a 20 meter tape because they actually roll out onto the reef very easily and then you can collect them back. And they also tell you exactly where every 20 or 50 centimeters is on the Tape. You will need a slate to actually write all of your results and your observations on. So we use an under, what we call our underwater slate, perspex and a pencil attached to it. And you will also need a meter stick which we'll be using for the fish and the invertebrate ID. One meter long PVC pipe. It's great to use underwater. Now remember, you also have the reef watcher guide that you take underwater with you. It's laminated and it has all of the most common corals and fish and invertebrates on it that you'll expect to see on our reefs. Remember when you're diving though that there's also safety involved, so please if you're going out on the water at all, make sure you have your water bottle with sunscreen and a first aid kit. Because even the smallest little cut in the sea can create a real problem if you don't take care of it intentionally. We also would like to use a GPS for our site selections. So a GPS is a global positioning system. This one is a bit of an ancient one, but it works really well still. And what it will do when I turn it on and press mark this site, it will actually give me a latitude and a longitude of the position of the reef site that we have. And that way other people can always go back to it. You can find your site back again as well using the GPS. In this program, we will be monitoring seven reefs, the North Bel Air's Fringing Reef, the South Bel Air's Fringing Reef, Fisherman's Bank Reef, Doughton's Bank Reef, Sandy Lane Bank Reef, Sandy Lane Patch Reef, and the Sandy Lane Fringing Reef. Each Reef Watcher team should have four to six volunteers. This is important because every member must have a dive buddy for safety. The team leader will assign tasks to each team member. Reef Watcher team members should fill out the site description sheet before they go diving. The site description sheet informs you of the date, time, what the weather was like, GPS coordinates and other general information about the site. The team leader is responsible for choosing the actual site on the reef for the transect and deploying the transect line with his dive buddy. It is important to keep the whole 20 meters of the transect line at the same depth so the dive profile does not get interrupted and to ensure that you are monitoring at the same depth for the whole transect.
The first survey to be conducted is the fish survey. Divers should wait 15 minutes after deployment of transects so disturbed fish can resume their normal behavior. In this example, we will use various objects as indicator fish. The fish team will carry the 1 meter PVC pipe along one side of the transect line using a stroke on the slate for each fish observed. Some of the fish that you will see is on the underwater guide. It is important to remember that you only go 1 meter out from each side of the tape. The invertebrate survey is quite similar to the fish survey, however you might need to look a little deeper into the reef for some of these inhabitants. Remember to note down also if there's any coral bleaching, any trash that you observe on the reef, or any coral damage. The last survey is the substrate survey. Substrate types should be recorded at 50 centimeter intervals along the 20 meter transect line. Remember that you are only monitoring what is right underneath the tape at those 50 centimeter intervals. There are nine categories of substrates. The team leader should go through these with the entire group before the dive. The final step of monitoring is the wrap-up and collection of data slates and sheets. Be sure to gather all equipment for the next monitoring survey too. Later this data sheet will be entered into an electronic database in order to be analyzed. Then we will send it over to the Folkestone Marine Reserve where it will be added to their electronic database for their reef monitoring. Well, this is the end of our instructional video. Please take care, safe diving, and thank you so much for helping us monitor our reefs. And we'll see you later in the sea. Goodbye.